Um, right now, there is a room full of Tories, and uh, what a nauseating thought that is, uh, who are deciding whether or not they have confidence in Boris Johnson. But as Zara said, we here, and I'm sure the majority of the people in this country, don't have confidence in him or his wretched government. We have no confidence in a Prime Minister who partied while people died and then repeatedly lied. Mm. I almost broke up into a rapture. But that so many people died at all is because he and his government at every step chose to protect the profits of the richest at the expense of our lives. We have no confidence in a Prime Minister for whom the horror in Ukraine is little more than a distraction for his domestic crisis, who is sabotaging peace talks and prolonging the war and spending billions on weapons at a time when the clock on climate breakdown is running now, uh, or indeed spending millions last week to celebrate an outdated relic, meanwhile telling us that people have to starve and live on the streets. This isn't a cost of living crisis, this is a cost of survival crisis, and it is a political choice. We have no confidence in him, and neither do we have any confidence in the rest of his criminal party. The Tories have for 12 years consistently cut public services, cut welfare, cut school meals, cut regulations on companies so they can use flamm flammable cladding. This is a government with blood on its hands. A government that even now isn't focusing on helping people, but on passing authoritarian legislation to reduce our right to protest, to let the police spy on us and to arrest trade unionists, to send vulnerable refugees to Rwanda. Now I've heard some people say that maybe it's better if Boris stays uh, in power so that he can wreck the Tory party from the inside. Or well, that if he's replaced it would just be another Tory. But we should welcome anything that weakens the Tories. The only difference is that we're not going to wait around for their internal squabbles. We can't afford to hang around and let the Tories stay in power. This is a fight for our lives, and that means we need to fight. This isn't a fight that's going to take place in Parliament. Neither the Tories nor the Labour leadership are on our side. We know that Mr. Useless, uh, I mean Sir Useless Starmer, would rather spend his time attacking the left than the Tories. But that should just make it clear for all of us that this is a fight that will take place on the streets, in our workplaces and in our communities. And we shouldn't let the ineptitude of Parliament, the authoritarianism of this government or the weakness of the op official opposition make us lose sight of the fact that this government is weak, that they are crisis ridden, that they have no real leadership and that they are simply unable to govern. It's hard to think of another time that so many people have lost trust in the government, that so many people can see through the lies, that the corruption and the collusion between Downing Street and the media and the police, who, when they're not letting the Prime Minister off, are strip-searching teenage black girls or, as Delia said, tasering people on bridges, uh, has been in full display. When I was out leafleting for next week's demonstration, the majority of the people that I came across were in full agreement that the Tories have to go. But what some people weren't sure about was what it is that we can do about it. And that is what our job is. It is to remind people about our strength and that united and organised, we can bring the Tories down and we can win. Today, the RMT shut down London. And if you wanted to know why the Tories and the media are attacking them, and by extension all of us, the strength that they have displayed today is why. Cleaners, hospital workers, refuse workers, teachers, postal workers, lorry drivers, they are all fighting and they are winning. Communities are surrounding immigration vans and stopping deportations. And that's why they are scared of us. When we mobilise, that's us exercising our power. So next week, on the 18th of June, we need to bring our biggest energy and all our numbers out on the streets. We need to unite the labour movement and the movements against austerity, against racism, against war, against climate change. And we need to rebuild our roots and our networks in every part of the country. And we won't stop until we kick the Tories out. So I hope to see you all on the streets next week and every other time that we need to protest because next week is just the beginning of the fight back. Solidarity.